Autodesk Forma just got so much better. And today I'm gonna to show you exactly why. What's going on team? My name is David Tomich. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're talking about the brand new features of Autodesk Forma that take it from an incredible software to a next level software. So if you haven't used Autodesk Forma before, or if you're a seasoned pro, this is the video for you. If you don't already know what Autodesk Forma is, it is the ultimate pre-designed software. It helps us analyze everything from sunlight to wind analysis, to shade and embodied carbon, which is exactly the topic I wanna to start on. You see, Autodesk Forma is awesome at pre-design, but embodied carbon is becoming a huge topic in the architecture community, especially as we move to net zero. From an architectural design perspective, it is incredibly difficult to analyze embodied carbon, except when you have a software like Autodesk Forma. So let's break down the embodied carbon element. I've gone ahead and recreated a commercial property we worked on recently and gave it a few different zones. Up the top in the right hand corner, you're gonna see an embodied carbon tab. So start by selecting the entire left hand model here on the left hand side of the screen, going to my adjustment parameters. Now for me, this could be a commercial building, but in reality, it is actually a warehouse. So I'm gonna change that to warehouse. It is built of tilt up concrete, which is reinforced concrete. Unfortunately, it is not a steel frame structure, but that is something that we can play with in the embodied carbon. Potentially, that might be the option we have to go to. The envelope of this building is an aluminum composite panel rain screen. So if you are using a specific item, make sure it is close to this Otherwise, you might have to select something like the terracotta rain screen, which might not exactly be what you're using, but it is more in line with the kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions resulting from that product use. Now, in this section here, this is more of a garden center. So my window to wall ratio is extremely low. I'd be inclined to go as low as 10%, which typically it would be something like 50% on a commercial office building. Next, I'm gonna repeat that same process for the purple building here, which for me is commercial, that is a office building. So I'm gonna keep that as commercial. I'm gonna select reinforced concrete as my starting point. Potentially, this may be too much of a carbon emission, so we may have to change it to a composite steel frame or even a mass timber structure, depending on what kind of national construction code regulations apply to your building. Of course, aluminum composite rain screen, same as the other building, adjusting my window to wall ratio, probably up to 25% because we don't have a lot of glass and a lot of facade here on this concept. You can see there's three to the front, a tiny little bit here, but most of it is actually behind and inside the building. And then last but not least, I have my gigantic orange square. So that again is warehouse, it is reinforced concrete, it is an aluminum composite rain screen panel, and there is very, 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 very little glass on this development. So we'll drop that all the way down to 5%. Now I can run my analyses. It only takes five or 10 seconds. It does not take a long time at all. As you can see, overall, this building isn't performing horrendously. It's got about a 490 kilogram carbon dioxide emission per square meter. It's okay. You can see it's come up as green, but it could always be better. Our structure, for example, is using the absolute most for this entire building. It's 56% of the overall design. So by simply tweaking a few of these settings, we can bring this down. So if we keep an eye out, on the structure figure of 7,870. If we were to take a look at our main warehouse building and let's for instance, change this to a composite steel frame structure rather than a concrete tilt up panel. It's not traditional, absolutely not, but that's exactly what we're trying to do here with reducing embodied carbon. We can rerun our analysis and you'll see that we've dropped from the high 7,000s to the low 7,000s. If we were to take that even further, let's say we were able to do this warehouse out of mass timber and rerun our analysis, we're dropping even further. And as we can see in our envelope settings, an aluminum composite panel is one of the highest CO2 emissions per square meter on this list. We have 2,050 tons of carbon dioxide emissions or 15% of our building by using the aluminum composite panel. If we were to look at any other option, for example, a fiber cement rain screen. Here in Australia, you can do an aluminum composite panel or a fiber cement screen that looks nearly identical, nearly the same size, and generally is cheaper to install. So let's scroll down, change it to a fiber cement rain screen, rerun this analysis, and we'll see we go from 2050 to 1830. Now that's a 10% reduction by simply changing a product. Doing this at an early design stage makes it 
though much easier at the end of the project to meet our carbon emission goal. Autodesk Form has not only introduced awesome new carbon emission data and features, but they've also added 3D sketch. Previously, we had to import our higher complexity models from Revit, for example, but now we can do it inside Autodesk Former. Simply open up our 3D sketch and you'll see a number of tools on the right hand side. We can obviously sketch using our basic tools, lines, rectangles, arcs, by three point circles and spines. We all know that generic stuff. However, now we also have freeform 3D shapes, cuboids and cylinders, as well as advanced modeling tools. So let's have an attempt at quickly drawing out a really nice office here at the front rather than the basic boring box design. There we go, by using the new 3D sketch feature, we're able to introduce a custom screen, some fins and blades for shading and shadowing of this glass. So then we're reducing the overall glass for the carbon emissions calculations later down the track. As you would have seen on that time lapse, I went ahead and used the 3D sketch feature. I used multiple things like free form, the cuboid. I did not go in to the cylinder tool because I didn't really see the massing working for this building, all of it being obviously a box. And then I used some advanced tools like subtract, unify, and offset. Now, of course, we can use all of those tools at once to create the perfect building. And this is just a very quick generic massing and modeling but you get the general idea. Now that we have an interesting form to play with, generally we would have run all of our analyses in Autodesk Former, understood this was the right building, the right shape, the right proposal, and then taken it back in to something like Revit, continued modeling, making it really pretty, rendering it out. If you're interested in learning exactly how I use Autodesk Former to create real world designs, then you can check out this video. I'll link it above and I'll link it down in the description below. With Autodesk Former's brand new update, we can skip a step. We can simply go to our extensions tool, add an extension, add Evolve Labs Verus. Now, if you don't know what Verus is, it is an AI software that lets you automatically create concepts. So we've got Verus up and running as an extension. You'll see it appear on the left-hand side under extensions. Before we fire up Verus, we want to kind of get the angle we're looking for set up. So for instance, if I was to zoom back a little bit, try create an architectural camera angle and then load Verus, you can sign into your own account, create one, it's completely free. And Verus is ridiculously easy to use. So as you can see, it will basically import that screenshot from Autodesk Former into Verus. And we can go ahead and select a number of predetermined scenes and prompts. So one of the biggest challenges with AI is obviously crafting your own prompt. You almost have to be an AI engineer to figure out what's going on. But thankfully, Verus makes it super easy. So for instance, if you wanted a forest rain realistic, it would create a building in the woods with large windows during rain with tall grass. Now, obviously that's not really the look we're going for. So let's have a look at what else they have available to them. So let's say I'm looking for a balsa wood model, maybe a chipboard model, or, or maybe even an award-winning render. I can simply click on one of these images and hit the render button. In a couple seconds, it'll give me an option for consideration. Now, what it's created is a very basic timber model, but that actually looks relatively good if you think about it. This is a plywood model. It's got some really nice well-lit trees in the foreground. It's blurred out the background. It's kind of setting the scene of what we're looking for. You can see that most of the building in the background has very limited glass. Only the main office building at the front is illuminated. So as a conceptual idea, that's done a relatively good job. We can go into our compose settings if we want to adjust a couple bits and pieces. So for example, increasing or decreasing our prompt strength to give more of or less of what we're really looking for. Whilst we can also adjust some of the prompt settings if we wanted to. But one of the best things about Verus is of course the ability to change specifics in the model. So for example, I can select this draw tool, go ahead and draw around the outline of my building, basically selecting the sky, completely change my prompt, add a prompt to something like fairy light, sky, dark and moody, keeping the professional photography in bokeh, which will hopefully give us a new background sky to play with. It won't touch the rest of the model, it will only touch that specific element I've asked it to do. And now down the bottom, it's created our second render, which if we click onto it, it gives us a bit more of a movie background. A couple of little fairy lights completely blown out, a realistic sky in the background, giving it a bit more of a realistic feel, but it hasn't touched any of the foreground, which is exactly what I wanted. 
Now, that is a rare feature in AI. The Verus does it exceptionally well. Now that we have our building masked and modeled and we have a cool idea thanks to Verus, we can take it to the very last brand new feature that's gotten significantly better in the past few months from Auditor Former. That, of course, is our former board. So in the top left hand, you see site design, board, and compare. We've talked about site design and we've talked about compare before. So now let's take a look at the board. When you open up the board, it will give you some clear directions and guidance, as well as an awesome YouTube video by Autodesk Former on how to use it. It's basically your introduction frame. Now, as you can see, if I zoom in and out, this board is basically an endless whiteboard to use as we see fit. So let's go ahead, left click, select it all and delete it. On top left hand corner, you'll see add from proposal one. There's going to be a couple different things that we can add. So for instance, we can drag and drop our area metrics. We can drag and drop our design view by selecting the design view four corners load and we can quickly adjust the sizes that we like. If we wanted to choose our camera angles, we can simply go back into our site design, adjust the angles, save it, and then it will update on former as well. So by clicking down the bottom, we go save our camera position. We can keep it as a date for now, that doesn't matter, and then jump back into our board. By clicking on our design view, we can then select December 8th at 12.26 p.m. and we'll see that screenshot come in. If we go back to our site, our extensions, and of course, Verus, we can render out an image that we like, save that image so that when we come back into our board, we can upload an image directly into our project, add a few quirky little lines, potentially some quick text to explain what's going on. We get a little creative with some post-it notes. Now you see, this is where the added benefit of being in Autodesk Former is. We'll go full screen so we can focus on this. Autodesk Former has some incredible analysis tools. Just like Embodied Carbon, if we go back to our site design, we can see we have sun hours, daylight potential, wind analysis, microclimate, noise, solar energy, and a whole bunch extra we can add through our extensions. I've gone ahead and run a few of these analyses already. So you can see that our building is performing with the sunlight solar analysis. Obviously this is just a quick massing, so it's not optimized just yet. However, if we come back to our former board, go back to add, we can start introducing our sunlight, our daylight potential, and even our microclimate analyses into this board. So let's quickly adjust them to where we best think they will go. Right clicking on the microclimate, reordering it and sending it to the back so our beautiful little sticky note doesn't get covered. And then you'll see we've got the basics of our information from our sunlight, daylight and microclimate. Now with all of this information, we can easily go to the top, select our layout and change items that we do or do not want to see. So for example, if we don't want to see the proposal name, we can untick that from all of these items. Similarly, with the area metrics, we have a whole bunch of extra information that so we can take away our parking statistics, we can take away our unit statistics, our building statistics, whatever the information we really need to showcase. Now, all of these look completely random, so let's adjust their camera angles to match that main design view. And now we have a little bit of consistency in our data. If we wanted to, we can come across to the pen tool, change to something like a red, scribble away in this section with our mouse or we could jump over to our ipad and use the ipad draw out a line and just simply quickly annotate too much shading now you have to excuse my terrible handwriting with the mouse but it does allow you the freedom and flexibility to do that last but not least one of the best features of autodesk former board is you don't actually have to export it anymore you can come up the top and add a new project member so if you have somebody that you want to communicate with let them be a collaborator or anything else, you can simply type in their email address and it will automatically invite them to the project. I've invited Arnie here from Autodesk. I'll blur out parts of his email so you guys don't spam him with too many comments. But I'll invite him to add some information to this board and I'll go ahead and add my own comments for him. Now I've gone ahead and sent that email direct to Arnie. He's been invited as a collaborator up the top and now I can go ahead and start adding some comments for him to take a look. We can even be a little bit cheeky with our comments and type something along the lines of really should have used my iPad and pencil to write on this former board. Once we've posted that comment, it'll come up the top in our comments section so that Arnie can go ahead, see that comment, add his reply, and we can continue to collaborate in real time. Anyway, that's all for me, team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And like always, I'll see you next week.